Hey guys, if you drop a piece of cobalt into a test tube and add some formic acid, it starts to react, forming cobalt formate. To speed things up, we can gently heat the test tube and use the powdered cobalt. After a little while, the clear formic acid turns a rich pink color, that's typical for a cobalt formate. Take a look at this powder. This is cobalt formate. Actually, it's not anhydrous, but it's hydrated form. If we heat this powder in inert atmosphere, the pink hydrated form turns into a violet anhydrous one. With more heat, it breaks down into carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water, and elemental pyrophoric cobalt. And to prove it's really cobalt, we bring a magnet close. The grey powder left after decomposition is easily attracted to a magnet. Elemental cobalt, like elemental iron, is strongly attracted to a magnet. Here is the same frame in ultra macro zoom. Now, if we try pouring the cobalt out of the test tube, most of it catches fire in contact with air. This highly reactive state of the metal powder is called pyrophoric. Let's slow it down so you can really see what's going on. The finely dispersed metallic cobalt powder, formed during the decomposition of cobalt formate, has an enormous specific surface area, which causes it to oxidize rapidly in air, often leading to spontaneous ignition. Since it can ignite in air, what happens if I pour some liquid oxygen onto this pyrophoric cobalt? It ignites instantly, the test tube can handle the sudden heat and just cracks apart. Now check out this forbidden blueberries. These are granules of anhydrous cobalt chloride. Unlike the red hydrated form, anhydrous cobalt chloride has a deep blue color. So what happens if we pour pyrophoric cobalt powder onto liquid chlorine? sparks a violent exothermic reaction. The blue smoke, you see, is actually the same anhydrous cobalt chloride we saw earlier. In slow motion it looks truly magical, that's not a color you usually see in smoke. So also I came across a claim in the handbook of reactive chemical hazards. It said pyrophoric cobalt decomposes acetylene. So I took a piece of solid acetylene. By the way, it burns in a really cool way. I got some slow-mo shots of those periodic flashes and soot formation. Mm -hmm. 
I placed the some solidacetylene on freshly prepared pyrophoric cobalt. Solidacetylene quickly evaporates, filling the test tube with gas, but nothing happens. Even when I surrounded solidacetylene with pyrophoric cobalt using a magnet, nothing happened. Only after intense heating did the acetylene ignite, clearly from reacting with air, not cobalt. And if you drop pyrophoric cobalt into acetylene released from calcium carbide and water, it also flares up. Because the cobalt is just red hot and it ignites the acetylene in air, you could use any red hot metal powder for that. So honestly, I still don't get what that handbook meant about cobalt decomposing acetylene. Write comments what you think about this reaction. Of course, I was also curious what color the smoke would be if I added pyrophoric nickel to liquid chlorine. For that, I used nickel formate dihydrate, a green powder that turns into pyrophoric nickel when heated, but its way less reactive than cobalt, it doesn't ignite easily in air. However, when poured onto liquid chlorine, it produces pale orange smoke, not green like you'd expect. That's because it forms anhydrous nickel chloride, which is actually orange. And when I tried reacting pyrophoric nickel with liquid oxygen, not much happened, only a small bit caught fire. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And of course a huge thank you to my patrons, your support makes videos like this possible, helps the channel grow and lets me show chemistry in all its beauty and power. Thanks for being here. See you in the next video.